Now, we all know that the subconscious mind causes the outcomes in our lives. And we know that it acts according to how it's been programmed over the years. And we do know that we can control it by being the director of our subconscious minds. Now, if you want to have a computer chip implanted directly into your brain, then by all means, you can be an early adopter on that. But I think that a regular pen and paper, whiteboard, chalkboard, anything like that, is not only underestimated, it's very convenient. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for Neuralink to hit critical mass, we can utilize creativity, a pen and a paper. No, but all jokes aside. So let's get into this because I think it's really interesting how we become what we focus on. So why not have a little bit of fun with a scripting exercise? But before I get into that, you got to understand that you're the prime minister of your own potential. You're the kingpin of your creations, the governor of your game plan. Because right now you're at the central position of your possibilities and potential. And so what I think this scripting exercise is going to help with is feeling more empowered. It's kind of like an avenue to take more control over your life. Of course, it's going to breed fulfillment, rewriting your life story, or writing your future possibilities is going to foster optimism. And we all know that those who are optimistic have a greater field of perception. It's going to increase the likelihood of you being able to achieve your goals and your desires. But it's really a self-discovery exercise. And I think it could help you find some of those hidden talents that might be stuffed down, laying dormant. It's going to improve well-being. And importantly, it's going to enhance focus because you're maintaining focus on long-term objectives. Don't forget adaptability because when you constantly write your future and you're scripting, you find new ways to pivot and make iterations. Being able to better perceive potential setbacks and challenges that may be around the corner. And self-actualization, which is really important. So let's talk about self-actualization because it's a goal within itself. It's not about being perfect or achieving all your goals, but it helps you approach challenges, relationships, and goals with acceptance and understanding. Self-actualized people have peak experiences. They're always able to conjure up a sense of joy, wonder, and enthusiasm for life. They live guilt-free. They embrace other people, no matter what their differences are. And rather than being fearful of things that are different, they enjoy applying their problem-solving skills to real-world situations. They just like helping other people. They're always maintaining a sense of purpose and gratitude. And to self-actualize people, their journey toward the goal is just as fulfilling as actually achieving the goal. So, you're going to want to try this. First, set aside a time, a dedicated time, whether it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Set aside this time where you're going to be doing the creative writing. You preferably want a quiet space, a space that's inspiring is even better. One thing to keep in mind is to clarify a vision, right? So usually relationships, financial, self-improvement, health. These are the things that you should focus on when you're scripting your future or rewriting your past. Envision the scenes. Envision, imagine specific scenes and include dialogues, locations, perspectives. Picture your ideal life in detail. So let's use the example of coming out with your own sneaker brand. Literally visualize the inspiration behind your sneaker design. Is it going to be drawing from nature, from art, architecture, culture? You want to imagine all the elements that influence your creative design. Sketching and conceptualizing. Also, what is the concept of your design? You're going to 
visualize yourself sketching different prototypes to come up with. You're going to think about and you're going to visualize the material selection. What kind of fabrics do you want to use? What kind of leather do you want to use? There's different kinds of rubber material for the sole. The tread on the bottom of the shoe. What's that going to look like? Also, you're going to visualize your brand identity. What's the story behind your, your brand? You're going to be thinking about collaborations and partnerships. That's another thing to visualize. What kind of influencers do you want to leverage? What kind of influencers do you want to try on your shoes to talk about it? And then, of course, you're going to visualize the logo. What do you want the logo to look like? Also, distribution and sales. Do you want it to get into certain stores? Maybe some e-commerce platforms? And then you can't forget feedback and iteration. I forget who said this, but they said, release often and release early, or release early and release often, or whatever. I'm probably not saying it right. But essentially it's release often and early, and then make changes on the feedback that you get. So picture this and visualize this scenario happening. Next, let's see. You got to believe in it too. Another thing that you want to do is mix dreaming with realism. Now, whatever you categorize as dreams, don't assume that it's not realistic because a three minute mile was not realistic until one person did it. And then a whole bunch of other people were able to follow suit. So it's only not realistic until somebody actually does it, right? Don't be afraid to mix in grandiose or things that are way out there. The whole point of this exercise is to be creative and use your creative muscle. Now, I think Steve Jobs' reality distortion field is fitting for this because what his colleagues said about him was that he was able to bend any fact to fit reality. He had this thing where he would, nothing was impossible. And people would push on it. You know, they would say, hey, wait, we, you know, they'd throw all kinds of logic at him trying to explain how this is damn near impossible. I don't think we're going to be able to pull this off, Steve. And he would always know exactly what to say. And he would switch. <laughs> there, would, uh, there would be a, a, a switch that would flip in these people. And then they would all of a sudden believe that they can achieve what they first thought was impossible. And the funny thing is about the reality distortion field, as they called it, was that soon after Steve left, it would start to fade away. And so every time they were in a meeting or what have you, it would come back. And they would talk about, you know, potentially how to ground this reality distortion field so they can use it for themselves. But they just had to ultimately say it was just a force of nature. It was something with him. And if you see some of the public speaking that Steve Jobs has done, you can see how he was able to do that. So I think Steve Jobs is a good example of somebody who is able to manifest things that he is scripting into reality. Another thing to keep in mind is to write playfully. If you've never done a brain dump where you just take a blank page on a notebook and you just write freely, you write freely for like 20 minutes straight, just let everything dump out. At first, it might be difficult where you'll stop after 10 minutes or after five minutes, you'll start writing, 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 and then you'll kind of blank. But the exercise is good if you keep it going. So do things like a brain dump. Just let everything out. If you have to go for a walk first, that often helps. You can work out, you can go for a walk, and then you'll notice thoughts start to bubble up. That's when you grab the pen and paper and you just start jotting things down. And while you're doing this, you're not worrying about spelling, grammar, punctuation, sentence structure, and all that. This is strictly creativity. So that's why it's very important to detach from any outcomes. 
Nobody's judging you on the scripts, the dialogues, the scenes that you're writing down. Don't just write general things. Write literal scenes of your ideal future and how you want it to be. This is not like a rigid manifestation agenda. You're not attaching to the outcome and wanting it to happen so bad. That's not what this is about. This is about exploring your creativity, heightening your senses. Later, you're able to articulate this much better because you went over it creatively first. Later down the road, you refine it. And that's why the consistent practice is so important. Because the more you do it, the more that it's going to become a natural process in your day-to-day -day life. Now, I think it's really important to write things daily. Don't break the chain. I think it was Ben Franklin who, whatever he was doing and practicing, he would put a, an X mark on the calendar. And if he missed a day, that basically broke the chain. So say if he did it for 27 days straight or 14 days, and then he missed a day, that broke the chain, you start all over again. Jerry Seinfeld did this, where he would practice his joke writing for a certain amount of hours every day, and if he didn't do it for that amount of hours, he couldn't put the X on the calendar. So then essentially that would break the chain. And the goal is to get up to a whole 365 days, a whole year, filling up the calendar with the X's without breaking the chain. So that's a good way to stay on track. So just embrace the openness. Remember to enjoy the journey. You know, these scripting exercises, they're to help you cultivate a positive mindset because what you focus on becomes your reality. And this is all unique to you. I think it was Joe Dispenza that said, if you're not the creator in your life, you're the victim in your life. So create your unique vision, write it down. I have these books here that I write things down and I have tons of these. I have, and this is, I have more back there. It, these are just the ones that I'm using right now. If you're not being defined by the visions of the future, then all you're left with is the memories of the past. And the patterns repeat themselves in life. So we have to start being at the cause rather than responding to the effect in life. We have to start going on offense instead of constantly being on defense. And this scripting exercise here is the beginning of the offensive play in the game of life.